Hello, everybody. We are live. Barely made it. I was running around the house. Let's see if I can pull up the chat here so I can see what y'all are saying. There we go. Mute. Cool. Hello, everybody. Got nine of you on here so far. What is going? I just muted this and it's still playing. There we are. I don't want playing with more than one knife right now. Obviously not. I got a bunch laying out here. I think a lot of us probably have a few laying out. 13 watching now. Cool. Stream looks good. Shiny knife. Giving reflections of everything. That happens. That's fine. Um, uh, ten dollars for starting on time. I always start on time. I actually, I actually set it up so it's it's pre-scheduled. So I kind of don't have a choice. It just goes on, whether I'm here or not. I'm gonna try and straighten this camera up a little bit because it drives me nuts when those lines aren't straight. I'm trying to deal with the delay. There we go. That'll be better. Did, did, there we are. Cool. Welcome to Brews and Blades. Doing stuff a little bit different this time. Uh, I've been very busy since I got back. I had a lot of knives waiting for me that you guys were wanting to see. So I didn't use my do my usual uh, EDC update. So I'm going to do that live. And I'm uh, going to do a, a knife disassembly. I don't, I don't usually do those live because sometimes they go bad. But <laughs> sometimes stuff just doesn't come apart and doesn't work out. But we're going to try it tonight. I'm going to disassemble the Para 3 Lightweight. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of questions about that, and I mentioned something in the comparison between that and the bug out, and I had a few, uh, uh, three or four actual like knife designers, you know, uh, real people uh, that know what they're talking about, get a hold of me and say, uh, no, that the issue you brought up is probably not going to be a problem, and made out some very good points, guys. We have nothing to do with Spider Co, so uh, I want to talk about that a little bit, and I thought best way to do that would be when it's torn apart in front of you, so we can talk about the thing that people are freaking out about that is. Uh, According to people who are much smarter than me, not an issue. Not an issue. Show the sky high. One minute. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff laying over here. I just brought out some stuff. Unfortunately, I will say off the bat before you guys ask, uh, these these are not mine. Very sad about that. Spider Cone Nirvana and a Gareth Bull Chamoiri, my grail. Really want one of those. Uh, these were kindly loaned to me by a viewer, and um, I got the Nirvana to... Uh, you guys asked for a comparison against the Anthem. I honestly think I'm not going to do that after putting them side by side. The Anthem is so much smaller than the, the Nirvana is a very big knife and um, uh, it's discontinued. So uh, I will, if I can get a Paisan, I'll probably do that, but it's still cool to experience this. But I will do a video on the Shamwari because it is my grail. I finally got my hands on one and it's, it's really cool. Yes, I, I was on when Nick lost his mind over the uh, M Tech that worked. Well, I wasn't on. I watched it the next day. But I have an even cheaper knife here. This was a, my birthday present from uh, Kiefer, who's usually on here. I'm sure he'll be on at some point. Keith, this is the infamous Dalica. This is like the dollar store $1 knife. And it is a uh, complete piece of shit. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. It is so dull, you can just... I can do this all day long. It wouldn't even exfoliate my skin, not to mention cutting it. It's, it's ridiculous. It's just so bad. And listen to this. Yeah, it does have a pretty snappy lockup, but then once it does, it's all got play and stuff. But uh, yeah, this thing is junk, all pinned together, plastic clip, stainless steel, the famous French stainless steel. I don't know where, it's just, it's junk steel, I'm sure. I doubt it's even stainless. Yeah, it is a complete piece of crap. It, it's for a dollar, they're overcharging, but it's fun to have around just to see how bad things can get. I, I do really like that. Um, maybe someday I'll do something where, uh, if you guys do something that I'll carry it for, I'm not even going to say maybe one week wouldn't, uh, maybe, but, uh, I don't even, you can't cut anything with it. I have to completely resharpen it and everything. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's too good for, yeah. It's, it's, it's not good enough for gas stations. <laughs> yeah. Keith, it's junk. You know, it is. You, you bought it for me as a joke. It is from, uh, yeah, it comes in this, the, the, uh, what? Toolbench hardware. 
I guess you can get them in several different places. I know they're at dollar stores. I heard some people say they got them at like uh, auto parts stores. I don't know where you got this, Keith. If you want to say what where you got it from. Uh, All right, are we back? There we go. All right, are you did get it at the dollar store. Okay, I'm gonna swing by a dollar store. I might, I might get a bunch of those and um, use them as gag gifts or something. Cause God, they are terrible. I would, I didn't want to get them because uh, I, I thought they'd be dangerous. But that thing's so dull, it's not even dangerous. Like you can't, even if it's shattered in your hand, you're much more likely to get your hand cut by the plastic than you are by the blade. Now, Harbor Freight actually has one pretty decent knife. I actually been meaning to get that. Um, I've actually, they have one that's actually fairly decent. I know Birdshot had done a couple of videos about it. Um, what are we drinking tonight? Tonight, changing things up. I said I'm changing things up, but tonight I am not, not drinking um, beer tonight. I am drinking scotch. I got it for birthday present from my wife. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I love Belvini scotch. I like good small scotch, but I don't buy it very often. She got me this little gift pack. I don't know which one I'm going to drink. Oh, let's just go. I'm just going to go left to right, make it easy. I'm just going to get the 12 uh, year one. You're drinking Mad Dog 2020. Are you still in high school? I drank a lot of that in high school. I mean, I'm sorry that that, that wouldn't have been legal. I drank a lot of that in college. Got my, uh, little tiny glass I undoubtedly stole from a hotel because it's in a sorry state. It's a very crappy, made, very poorly made glass. Got my ice here. Yeah, we're just going to do one. A little slightly larger than what I'm going to say for a special occasion. It looked like it was arranged from uh, left to right for the cheapest to the most expensive. So we'll start out with the cheapest. I'll probably go through two of these tonight, let's be honest. All right, having a little scotch. It's been a while. Actually, it has not been a while because I was um, I drink scotch on airplanes a lot, and I've been flying a lot lately. So, mm, yep, that's Bovini. I'm gonna put another uh, ice cube in there only because I don't want it watered down, but it's very warm. All right. Uh, what do we got going here? Just got done mowing the lawn. Uh, yeah, I mowed my lawn today, too, which was uh, consisted of me uh, telling my son to mow the yard. I did get the mower out and make sure it started for him, though, because it was the first time, first time starting of the year, so make sure it ran. Mm, survive Knives GSO 2.7. I, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up later. Hello, D's Knives. That's a very good name. What's the Caribbean cast taste like, uh, Craig? I've heard it's good, but does it have some kind of extra thing? Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Um, what's up first? I'm going to do, just in a moment, I'm just going to say hi to everybody here for another second, and then we're going to do, I'm going to do my EDC update for last month because I was out of town and then got busy and missed it, and by the, I figured I'd just do it live. The video quality does not look great. I apologize for that. There's not much I can do about that. Yes, it is a Wii Malice. I did a review on it. I'm going to do upcoming this week um, at some point this against the 0562 tie because they are extremely similar. Yeah, I got the flame job one. Non Brian spec. Not Brian spec. The slippy is one I got in Germany. We'll talk about these probably towards the end too because I already did a video on them. But uh, this is a heart cough. I can't remember which model it is. The 101, I think. It's a very pretty thing. Uh, not terribly expensive, though. It was like 100 euros. So like 110 bucks. Yeah. Asking how the Malice compares to the Archbishop 2.0. You know, it's been so long since I had the Archbishop 2.0 that I I don't really want to say for sure. I, this is definitely bulkier, for sure. Um, but I don't really... I have to go back and watch my own video of the Archbishop. But uh, yeah, very, very pretty thing, though. It's got a cow horn. It is just a beautiful thing. I do like it. Uh, were you able to get a Benchmade out in Germany? Nope. The shop that I went to uh, where the, for the Euro exclusive Pardue uh, was out of them. They were going to have them back three days later, but I was leaving that town two days later, so I was not able to get one. Just didn't, just didn't work out. But I, 
Then nice guy loan me this shit, Mario. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Do I have a smock? I do not. Um, I'm going to be getting one to borrow, but I haven't arranged for that yet because I've just been so swamped with stuff. But all oh, the chamois is. I said it was my grail. You guys kept asking me, my ask me anything, and um, I am not disappointed. It's funny. I just did the video with uh, this with the about uh, with the uh, Hinderer half track full tie as being the most expensive knife ever reviewed, and then now I got a chamois in. I think maybe even the Nirvana is more than... I'm sure it is now in the secondary market. It's cost more than this. But I know the Shimori definitely does. These things go for silly money on the second market, secondary market. But the action on this, such a tiny little blade. Just to show... And look at... It's just totally smooth drop shutty. And this blade has no weight to it. It's just amazing. Somebody loan me the Shamori. It is not mine, unfortunately. Um, it's a loaner from a from a viewer. But, oh, I want it. I really want it. I kind of poked it, would you sell it? And it, it was very clear that that was never going to happen. <laughs> so I didn't uh, I didn't do it. Before anybody else, cheers. I'm drinking scotch tonight instead of beer because uh, my wife got me some really nice scotch for my birthday. So. Well, I was going to Blade Show. I'm going. I'll be the, the handsome man in a Slicey Dice t-shirt. I am getting t-shirts before I go there, so... Um, feel free to come up and say hi if you see me there, by the way. I know not many, but a couple YouTubers don't like to be talked to. Um, I am definitely not one of those. Feel absolutely free to come up and say hello. Just know that I am there working, and if I say I gotta go do something, that means I gotta go do something. I'm not I'm not being a dick, but... Uh, uh, yeah, so this is the, the Nirvana. It is really nice. It's much larger than I expected it to be. I'd never seen one in person. It's a big sucker. Again, not mine, loner, but, uh, it's a bit bigger than I probably would have, uh, than I liked or, at, at a while ago. I mean, I carry knives as big now, but yeah, I don't think I'd buy one, but, uh, it's pretty cool. I'm not a big S90V fan either, and it's S90V steel and, eh. That's what's that's what's honestly stopping me from getting the um, the drunken, as I just don't like S90V much. It's so difficult to sharpen. I just don't um, I don't have the patience for it. And again, the Wee Malice, the Fair and Forge. Uh, it's an aftermarket edge on the blade. I don't know about the finish. No, I don't think it's a finish because everything's on there. It's an aftermarket edge, yeah, but I don't think it's the uh, I don't think the finish is different. I don't know. Some somebody loaned me. I'm not sure, but it no all the all the stampings there and stuff. I don't think it is. Could be. I don't know. If you make no noise, can you hear Kurt Cobain when you open the Nirvana? Da -da -da. Yeah, you can. I I actually was just talking to somebody about this last night. My friend's a musician, and um, I got instant street cred because I met Kurt Cobain. Like I don't know him, but I like met him backstage at a concert once. And uh, before, they were a huge deal. They were kind of becoming a big deal, but they weren't a giant deal yet. And I actually met him and uh, could have sat down and talked to him for a while, but I was 19 years old and I was just didn't do that kind of stuff. So, um, but it was cool. Uh, no, I was back. I was friends with the guys from Blind Melon. So um, I was at a Blind Melon concert because I did college radio and um, Blind Melon concert and me puppets were opening and... Kurt's friends with them, and he came for the show, and he just was hanging out backstage. I've never seen Nirvana play live, but I did get to meet him once, so that was cool. All right. Let's do the EDC update, because I said in the title that's what I was going to do, so I want to do stuff that I said I was going to do first. I didn't miss any stuff I wanted to say, right? I've already almost buried everything here. All right, we talked about the scotch. Drinking Belvaney scotch tonight instead of beer. Um, EDC update. <clears throat> so, I'm just going to bring them all out in this little tray I got laying here uh, next to me. Um, first up, I do the five. These are the five. We'll get to those as we come through. But uh, honorable mention definitely has to go through or go to this TRM Atlas. I was in Germany for a week and a bit, and this is the only knife I brought with me because it's legal over there. Uh, it's one hand open, but it's not locking, so it's perfectly legal there. And I have to say, 
I was not remotely disappointed that I only brought one knife. This thing did everything I needed it to do. You know, I was I was uh, helping guys set up booths, cutting zip ties, all that kind of stuff. I was, I cut up, I cut pizza with it because I ordered pizza and asked them to cut it. You have to ask them to cut it over there, and they failed to do that. So I had to I had to cut pizza and stuff, and it was, it's, it looks very tiny for that, but it's so sharp, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I just, I really liked it. It's small, it's discreet. I took it out in front of a whole bunch of different groups of people. No one was intimidated by it. Uh, it's comfortable. I, I have, I've always liked this knife and now I've just, I fell completely in love with it. It's definitely my favorite slip joint that I own now uh, by a mile. S35 VN and just so razor sharp. I have not cleaned it since I got back from Germany. So it is all, it was in my pocket the whole time I was there. Just a fan freaking tastic knife. And, um, no, this is S35VN. Somebody said CPM 54 on the Atlas. No, nope, it's S35VN. says so right there. I don't, I don't know how the camera quality is. You might not be able to see it. But, uh, now it was CPM 54 on the Vider. But, uh, on the Atlas, it's always been S35. Um, uh, but just a fantastic freaking knife. I, I can't, I can't recommend these enough. It's just, if you like, if you want a small, discreet slip joint that still has a pocket clip and stuff, I'd, I don't know how you possibly do better than that. It's just, it's just great. So what did I carry the most this month? I'm going to try and do these in order of, not in order of, I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to save the most carried for last. Let's do that. Cause I, I don't remember exactly the order. I have my notes here, but, uh, I don't want to keep looking at those. Surprise for me was I haven't even had this the whole month. I've had it most of the month, but I didn't have it the whole month and the AD 10. The Cold Steel 8010 is just, I, it's huge. It's not something I would normally like to carry, but I just freaking love this thing. It's so comfortable in the hand. Um, other than when you try to reach in your pocket, it doesn't feel as big and heavy as it is. It's so nicely contoured. The blade is just amazing. So razor sharp, nice hollow grind. I, I just... I love this thing. Choke up on it. And the ergonomics are just so great. I think that's what I like the most about it. Like if I have to go out and make, a lot of times uh, when I talk about cutting long amounts of cardboard, I'm making bike boxes into bigger bike boxes. So they're very long cuts. And this thing is just so comfortable to be doing that stuff and just glides through it. Oh, I just, I'm in love with this thing. And I know that no matter, like that I, I'm not going to break this thing. There is no way. Can't do it. I, I can't break it. I, 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 this is, this knife is more man than me for sure. We haven't measured appendages, but it, if it has one, it, it's probably bigger than mine. Uh, just freaking amazing knife. I, I wish I'd have got this instead of the 8015 when I was debating on which one to get. I'm going to get another 8015 though. There are still things I like about the 8015, but the 8010 is, uh, if you have to choose between one and the other of the, these two new high end, you know, coal seals that came out. Yeah, I get the 8010. I should have listened to Jimmy Slash when he said that. We're just going to set this off the side here because I don't have room anywhere else. Uh, what's next? Uh, it's moving down the, the list. This was my most carried for a lot of the last couple months, but I still carried a ton because I still love it. My ZT0562 tie. It's still, again, bigger. I'm just getting into bigger knives lately. But, uh, man, it's just uh, it, the sound. I've been through this a million times in this knife. You guys know how much I love the 0562 tie. I like hinderers, and I, I love this design. It's basically, you know, ZT's version of the X18, XM18 Slim, um, or Slicer Grind, and I just, man, I like it. It's a great knife. It's, you can see other stuff about that. Uh, next up, the Anthem. Since I've gotten this, I, I've, again, I had, did not have this the whole month, but I carried it a whole lot. Um, it's uh, just a, I especially with this aftermarket clip on it. This is a MXG gear clip that's made specifically for the Anthem because they have different uh, different screw patterns and it matches the bronze very well. I do not like the stock clip on it at all, but it's just it's getting even smoother. It, weird, it's weird. Anthems. Everyone I know who has one, they don't have that glass smooth. Like you can kind of feel that there's bearings running on something. It's still obviously very drop shutty, but uh, it, that's smoothing out even too now. So even that's kind of going away. And I tuned it a little bit. 
I did take it apart, which is, oh my god, it's the easiest thing in the world to take apart. I should have done a disassembly on this tonight. You just pop the pivot out, slide everything out, put it all back together, slide it back in, pop the pivot back in. It's super easy. Like, I always thought integrals will be very difficult to work on. At least this one is ridiculously easy. I mean, yeah, if you wanted to take the whole lock mechanism apart, that would be a giant pain in the ass, I assume. But just as far as taking it out to clean it and maintain it, easiest thing in the world. It's a piece of piss, as they would say. I've never understood that phrase. Uh, but next up will be the Skaha. I do carry the Skaha a fair amount still. It's just so light. And it's so comfortable, again, to use. I, my daily carry knives, I like stuff that's just really comfortable. That's probably my number one priority because uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a heavy, heavy-duty user. So most blades are fine for me. I just want something that that's comfortable to use and that's light and it's easy to easy to handle sorry you said you missed the mail I'll, I'll be when we when i get done with the disassembly we'll sit here and chat for a bit and i'll bring some other stuff i'm sure the malice will make another appearance don't worry um yeah just this is the skaha is just was worth the wait i know a lot of you guys are waiting a long time and you get mad when, when i post it but um yeah it's it's just it's worth the wait guys just trust me and get the carbon one just get the carbon fiber one. It's not that much more. It's a bit more special and it feels more expensive. But my number one carry has definitely been the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. It's, uh, I just really like it. I don't, I don't know. It's just, I just really like it. I know it was Zach's bid. <laughs> and there's no bidding on this guy. End of this. Stick around. I might do some bidding on something. There's something I am going to let go. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do a little auction on here. Um, there is something I'm going to let go because I got something similar to it and I don't need it anymore. Uh, but yeah, I do love the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Just a great blade. Very it's super, super sharp. Uh, S35VN is one of my favorite steels. Easy to touch up. I've even come to terms with this clip. I was going to try and find a way to replace it and you know what i've come to terms with it and it doesn't really bother me anymore yeah you should go over to southern i'm jealous i'd love to go see them i'm definitely gonna be one of my first stops at blade show i don't think they have anything new although i just get an email doing a giveaway so maybe they have something new but i just want to meet them uh because they seem like great people and i don't want to meet just zach brown because he's famous i know plenty of famous people it's just i want to um i just want to get to know the people because they say everybody says they're so great i have not had to contact them so i don't know but yeah and i got the tool to take it apart you need a tool to take these two things off do i have it right here i don't have it within arm's reach no but um oh yeah i do here it is i put it on this it's still sitting on this too easy to take apart and action's gotten even better it is just amazing for uh for the the price that you pay for it um it's got a bad monkey and i love it to had to send it back for a week due temp, but it came back perfect. Well, that's good. Sorry, you had to send it back, but it's good that they fixed it and you got it back right. So, uh, of this month, and I think these some people say these EDC updates aren't worth anything, and I kind of thought that for a while too. But I know that the way I do the EDC are just stuff that I actually want to carry. So I think it's valuable information to know like what I'm keeping around and what I'm carrying all the time because I have. Let's face it, between what I own and what I get into review, I have, I get a lot of stuff, so. All right, next up in the uh, program, let's answer some questions first. Let me go back through. Um, let the bids begin. I, I'm going to wait till the end, so. Uh, what did everybody else carry today? I had the uh, 8010 in my pocket today because I, I thought I was going to have to do a lot of stuff, and I, I wound up not having to. So um, I thought I was going to have to be out doing yard work and working on the car and stuff. And then um, uh, I remembered that I have a son who's 20 and doesn't pay rent. So he mowed the yard. And then uh, I found out for, for the part from Volkswagen and uh, the interwebs told me that it's under warranty. So it's going back and they can take care of it. Manix 52100, ooh, nice. Uh, Norseman 411 and an 8015. Wow, you're outgunning everybody, Sergeant Kong. That's good. Orange Spider Codelica. Bug out. 
Uh, oh, scotch is a good thing. This is going to go down quick. I may drink all three of those little tiny bottles. If you guys didn't see when I started drinking scotch because my wife got me a little gift set with three of these little Bovini bottles in it. This is the 12 year old. There's a 17 year old at Caribbean cask. So, uh, oh, five, six, two. Yeah, that's a good, I just, just had that on. You know, I love that knife. So let's, let's do some disassembly. Let's be honest. Most likely some stirring. I have not cheated a bit on this. I hope this comes apart easy. This is the spider coat para three lightweight. Uh, part of the reason why I want to take this apart is everybody's freaking out about the fact that the stop pin only has a liner on one side and it rests if I run on the other. So, and I, in the comparison thing, I, I mentioned it. I said people were going to worry about it, just like people were about the bug out having, uh, having the springs that might break, whatever. Um, after I said that, I was independently contacted by three different knife designers whose, whose name, Names you would know if I said it, um, but I, they didn't. I didn't ask, so I'm not going to. And said, "Who gives a shit? It's fine." And one of them pointed out anybody. It would be Cold Steel, right? Oh, here's a Cold Steel American Law Man. Stop pin sits on G10 on both sides, so it's completely linerless. And I don't hear anybody talking about them breaking. FRN's pretty tough stuff. I was actually told by a by a knife designer that it's actually in his test it's actually tougher than some forms of aluminum so um it's fine uh so i'm not going to ever mention that again about that being a problem and you know i had people much smarter than me tell me it's not a problem so i'm gonna listen to that but let's take this apart and we'll show how it goes i've never taken this apart yet so we will find out together there's another issue inside of it people are going to worry about Normally use this I fix it thing with some uh, some bits, but uh, I don't want to be bumping the camera. These are shorter, so that's why I'm using these. But and these are the ones I give for you use for the giveaways, and I will again. I'm just out of them at the moment, and they haven't got me any new ones yet. Got my KPL and stuff. Got my isopropyl alcohol. Just making sure I got all my stuff here. All right, let's go to it, and then you guys can tell me all the stuff I'm doing wrong. Because I know you will. One thing that's weird about this, it does have three different size screws. Which is slightly annoying. Let's see if we can just take apart one side. That's good. It's not locked tighted together on pivot. This is a little rubber mat I got off of uh, Amazon. I can't remember what they called it, what it was for. I want to say it was for watchmaking or something like that. T6. All my T6s get worn out, so I want to make sure I'm grabbing a good one. <laughs> There we go, not Loctited. That is excellent news. Come on, what was that? No, it was Loctited, it just came loose because that is excess Loctite. And you need a T8 for this back one, it looks like. That's weird, I don't know why they do that. So the stop pin is T6. The Backspacer is T8. I'm going to need to take one out on the other side. I already know. I'm just realizing that the pocket clip is going to have to come off. Should have taken this apart on the other side, but you know what? You live and you learn. Wow, that's a big screw for that. That's what she said. Is it a T8 for the... Yeah, it is. For the wire clip, too. I'm going to do this and I'll look up... Yeah, it's probably going to, we're not getting a good YouTube service today. So my internet, I've got my internet monitor up and it's running really fast, but uh, YouTube is not processing it. So we'll set that there. So I keep stuff somewhat separated. Yeah, it comes right apart. Man, that was easy. That was easy peasy. Well, until we get to this. Nope, that came right off too. Sweet as. Now we'll see if I remember how that sits back on there. I wasn't looking. Were you looking? There we go. It's like, is it like that? No. Is it like, there we go. It's like that. I see now. I'm just, I'm just only doing this because I'm a stupid person. So I want to make sure I remember how this goes back on. Yes, it would appear that it is like, yep, like that. Okay. 
just preparing for my own stupidity. That's a uh, that's something you do now and in your life when you get older. It's okay if you get stupid as you get old. Just make sure you're ready for it. Um, and then I just use. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I mean, it's, it doesn't need it, but we're gonna. I'm not gonna bother taking the other side of that pivot off. I'm just too lazy right now. I don't want to set myself up for failure. Yeah, I'm seeing the skipping now a little bit too, but nothing I can do about it. Just 91% alcohol. This is I just cut up old bike t-shirts to use for rags because I attend way too many cycling events. And I wind up with free t-shirts that I don't want. Because everybody says, take this free t-shirt like they're doing you a favor. And you're just like, I only have so many drawers and I'm never going to wear that thing. What is that on there? Yeah, there's a little chippy chip. Oh no, is, is it a deep? No, it's not a ball. It looks like that's just a chip. I could be wrong, but and it's kind of rough. That looks like a slight production flaw, doesn't it? It's obviously nothing that affects anything because everybody keeps commenting that from my video that my action looks better than everybody else's. But um, yeah, I haven't done done anything to this knife yet. I think, oh, I turned the screw like a quarter, but I didn't do anything else. So as you can see, one of the things people are wigging out about is, um, let me get, clean this pivot off. Um, yeah, there's no bushing on this, this on the, uh, the clip side scale. Uh, and so it's, the blade is just running on the FRN. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Spyderco's done that for years on lots and lots and lots of stuff. So we'll see if it becomes an issue. I'm definitely not going to be getting rid of this at all, but um, we will see. Um, and people don't like these. These it doesn't really have backspacers per se. It's just kind of molded into here. But um, it's definitely not an issue initially. We'll see if it becomes one. I'm going to put some lube in here. I have uh, a the old KPL. I don't exclusively use KPL. This is kind of a weird thing to do. I'm going to put it on the blade. Let's be smart about this. So let's put a little bit there. I try not to over lubricate stuff, but no, I don't think that's a detent ramp. I think that is, uh, I think that is just a flaw. I could be wrong. We'll see. Oh, I didn't put any on the uh, actual pivot. Bad boy. Down there. Now I saw in the video that uh, Spiderco did a disassembly of this, and he said that, and uh, Sal or Eric Lesser said these two holes are something to indicate it's a production thing. They don't actually do anything, um, which I thought was interesting. Like, oh, that's a bit too much, but. Oh, so be it. We'll, we'll dab a little bit of it off. I would just like to fill that detent ball hole. And then get our washer. Oh, I hate picking washers up off these things. I should have done this a different way. There we go. I keep my fingernails very short, so... so. And I'm weird. I like to feel around and just feel the smoothest side. Yeah, they had it the right way. The smoothest side of a washer against the blade. Probably not necessary, right? But and I don't think it's a detent. Maybe it is. It might be a de. Yeah, you're. Uh, you know, you might be right. It might be a detent hole. It does look more. My eyesight's really bad. You know, what we're gonna do. <laughs> this is how bad this is because I can't figure out if that's a flaw or not. So let me. It does make sense. It's a detent. I'm gonna put my readers on. Yes, I am this old. Yeah, you're right. That's a that is rounded. It's my poor eyes. My poor eyes deceived me. Yeah, it is rounded. It looked like just a chip when I didn't have my glasses on. My bad. My bad for briefly insulting Spyco. So <laughs> I am a sad old man. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on there. I did. 
don't want to shabazz it. I'm sure he's okay with me saying that because he makes fun of himself about putting too much lube on stuff. In most cases in life, you can never have too much lubrication, but in some cases, you can. All right, take this little, this dried out quick. Put a little more alcohol on these. We'll clean these screws off. It did have a large amount of Loctite, but it all broke, broke loose pretty easy. I would blow this out too. I like to, especially when there's stuff with a lot of Loctite, I blow it out. But uh, I realized about 20 minutes before I started this that my compressed air can was um, was bad. Ramon, what are, you, are we still talking about Curb uh, Cobain thing? Um, <laughs> get off my lawn! I'm just cleaning. Cleaning screws now. I am, I will admit, kind of uh, when it comes to disassembly stuff, I am a bit of a Shabazz disciple. I kind of bought a lot of the same stuff that he has and um, follow a lot of his same methodology. He does a lot of these videos. He knows what he's doing. There we go. That's clean enough. They're not perfect, but... Perfect enough for a live video. More scotch. That'll make this assembly go better. Oh, you were saying you're old. Yeah, and I'm, I just turned uh, 44. I am two score and four years old. But my eyes suck. So, um, I have light issues too. By the way, if you guys see me, if people are asking about Blade Show, and I've had a lot of people ask about meeting me at Blade Show. If you see me and I'm wearing sunglasses indoors, it's not because I think I'm cool. I have an eye condition and I have to. So, um, People get very put off by an um, adult man indoors wearing sunglasses. So um, I have to sometimes. I wear light ones when I'm inside, but um, yeah, I, I get light things. Ooh, you're getting an Evo Typhoon tomorrow. Uh, that's awesome, Jason. I, I, I wish I'd have gotten in on that. I'm not buying any more knives until Blade Show. Well, that's a lie. I bought I bought three this weekend, but... Um, I gotta feed the beast, so I couldn't spend all my money on one. So I've got three coming for reviews. I have uh, the Kaiser. Oh, that is completely not the right size. I have the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog in both of its forms. I got the 154 CM Vanguard one, and I got a Titanium one coming. And I finally got a Viper uh, Balone. You guys wanted me to get one of those, um, and we're just gonna take a guess on that. And um, Finally got one. The color I wanted was finally back in stock at the uh, the uh, guy that I use. So I got one. I got the bronze with the carbon fiber, and I really wanted that one because I think that's a knife I'm going to want to keep. I mean, it's a Vox. So hello, Steve. You know the balls jokes are getting really old, right? I'm only half joking about that. I've heard that since I was, like, born. And no one's ever come up with an original one, so knock yourself out. But I have heard every ball joke that could possibly be made by the time I was 11. And you have not impressed me yet. Um, That was probably way too much Loctite on that screw, but there we have it. Uh, still haven't, still not impressed me. Still not hearing anything that I haven't heard before. And also, when, when, and I, and I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, Steve. I, I know you're just joking around, but also when, uh, when you guys, uh, and when anybody wants to mess with me, also a special, also remember, I'm a professional writer and comedian. And if you give me a second to sit and think and type a response, it's probably not going to go very well for you. There's one thing I'm good at. It's arguing with people on the internet. It's been, it's been my job for 20 years. And I, when I'm in a salty mood, I enjoy it. And I'm drinking scotch tonight. And then we're back together. Let's see the action. I think it's going to be too tight. No? Is it centered? Nope. I grabbed the wrong one again. Yep. God. 
monkey decks. I always grab the wrong one. It's not centering up like it was. There we go. Now it's there. And now it's too tight. <laughs> yeah, you beautiful bastard. I probably just managed to knock it off center and not quite get it right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not as not as drop shutty as it was by any means. Mm -hmm. You got 17 years in a pro kitchen. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Steve. That is a that is a good that is a good training. But I've I have 10 years working in comedy clubs, hanging out in the kitchen. So, yeah, it's not shutty anymore. It was for a second, but it was off center. Oh, Shiza, which side did I lose? Okay, it's perfectly centered now, so let's do this. Spider Co. pivots are so much fun. There we go. Now it's back to normal. Yeah, it's a hair off to one side, but... We're going to call that good. Is knife centering just one of those little quirks everyone has? No, I mean I think it's just a sign of quality. I don't I don't think it doesn't matter most of the time, but I think uh, it's a sign that the company the company gives a damn. I think uh, there's other other YouTubers on here. Zach was on. Steve probably agrees too. It's just a sign. It's a warning sign if you get a knife that doesn't have a centered blade, even if it's not touching anything, it's not affecting anything. It's just kind of like, no, uh, what else do I got to look out for? <laughs> Shabazz would have done it in half the time. I don't think so. I did that in what, ten minutes? I don't think if that. And I was talking to you guys and drinking scotch. He focuses when he does it. I'm distracted. You give away knives that won't center. I'm not that bad. I don't think it's anything that's really like. I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. But it's just it's just when I see it, it makes me it makes me look closer for other things. What do you think about that, Steve? I'm going to actually give you a, a forum to, to answer a question on here. I can see it being a pet peeve, but that's really kind of what it is. It's really just more of a pet peeve. I think we're going to go to scotch number two. <sighs> yep. Yep. It's time. Get some more ice out. If you guys saw how I'm storing my ice, well, so I have, I have one of these insulated solo cups, and I think actually it might be my wife's, and I still, but it's mine now. I've stolen it for a long time ago. It looks like a solo cup, but it's like an insulated cup, and I just put like a bunch of ice and enough water to hold it. So next up in the Belvenie, Belvenie is how I say it. I don't know how you're supposed to properly say it. I always say Belvenie at bars, and they know what I mean. We're going to go with the 17-year. I had the 12-year the first time. Scotch and sharp things. Hey, you don't worry about me drinking and handling dangerous things. I've done that for the vast majority of my life. That's how I live my days. Drinking and doing dangerous stuff. That's not really true anymore. It used to be, but not anymore. I feel like I'm on an airplane. What was the best meal I had in Deutschland? Well, I'm biased because uh, I like I like German junk food, and um, get some knives out here. I like German junk food, and I have a favorite restaurant that I always go to, and uh, it's freaking great. And I, it was my meal cost me I think nine euros, but it was like they have the best curry worst the world has ever known. Yep, it was currywurst. Yep, I freaking love currywurst. And they have the best ever. It's slightly fancy. Like, it's fancier than you get at, like, a booth. But, um, or, a, you know, kiosk. But it's, uh, it's, it's really good. It, it, it's so good. I love it. Thanks, Sergeant Kong. Appreciate it. Oh, by the way, yeah, the Super Chat's open. I always forget to mention that to people. But, um, scotch is for guys who haven't discovered bourbon. I like bourbon, too. I just, uh, my wife bought me bought me scotch for my birthday, so I'm drinking my birthday present. You know, uh, Kyle, sometimes I drink it without ice, but... Oh my gosh, that's good. I don't think I've had the 17 before. Ooh, that's tasty. That is tasty. Are you drinking bourbon, Steve, I assume? 
get the Kapara out, please. Where did I, I just, I just had it a second ago. Yeah, whenever I remember where I set it. I'll, I'll, oh, there it is. <laughs> this is going to be one of those nights. So I did say I might, I might sell something. Um, I think I'm going to sell my crew wear para three because honestly I don't carry it. And now that I have the para three lightweight, that works just as well for size comparisons because it's the exact same size. It's a limited edition. I looked on eBay at these things and the prices are all over the damn place. So I have, I have no idea what to ask for it. I saw them as high as 300 on eBay. I think that's a bit ridiculous because they aren't going to make any more, I guess. Um, I guess they are done. But uh, I don't know. Somebody, if you guys want to make me an offer, post it here, email me, sliceofdice75 at gmail.com. Probably going to sell that. I'm keeping an eye on the price of these uh, 940-1501s because uh, I know for sure they are never making any more ever, ever, ever again because um, Benchmade has decided not to do dealer exclusives anymore. They're just going to do their own sprint runs, and that is it. So um, I'm keeping an eye on the prices of these, and it would have to go crazy, but if these go crazy, I'll sell it um, and just get a regular 940. But uh, no, $63 is not even going to start. Um, what just dropped to 178 Oh, the, these things, or which one? I don't know. Um... But uh, yeah, three hundred isn't crazy for a crew wear. I, I I would never, I wouldn't feel right charging somebody that. Um, but I, that's what I saw on eBay was like they were two fifty to three hundred, but that doesn't mean they sold them at that. That's just what they're listed at. So I don't go by that. I was gonna sell one of, and I hadn't decided which one yet, but um, I was gonna sell one of my Isham Savivis. I will move. We'll move this aside because this isn't going to be for sale anytime soon. Um, neither is the Kapara, but you, somebody asked for it, so we'll put it up there. Um, I was going to sell one of these Isham Savivis, and then I was going to do a video comparing the two and then sell one of them, whichever one I decided to keep. And now they're coming out with another one. <laughs> so now i got to wait for the next one to get. It's ridiculous. Uh, the only one for sure I'm selling right now is the Crew Wear uh, PM2, and I, or Para 3, sorry, and I, I'm still not sure about the... Uh, the price on it. Yes, I am ready for Game of Thrones. I think this is going to be a pretty boring episode. I think this is going to be a lot of Lannister posturing. That is my prediction. Yeah, the Anthropos is, I think, the one I like the most so far, but now they have an even smaller, like, really super dope light one that's, like, under two ounces. I'm really freaking excited to get that. And I may have to redo the Bug Out Para 3 battle with that in it, too, because it's another, like, two-ounce knife. Or honestly, you know what? The Bug Out one. So I'll probably just do Bug Out versus the new... McKenna! It's Yeah, the McKenna. It's That's my daughter's name. Not spelled that way. That's the Irish way. Mine is spelled... My daughter's name is spelled the Scottish way. Even though I'm half and half. I'm 50-50 Scottish and Irish right down the middle. I'm a genetically engineered alcoholic. As, as we say as I'm sitting here drinking scotch. Um... Yes, yes, Keith. There are plenty of stickers left. Uh, I've got a hundred of them. I think I sold about ten something like that and the dad they all just uh mailed out on friday so yes there are stickers available they're all this size they're what two by three um i have a bunch of them and they're very nice quality you can put them on your car and stuff they're they're vinyl they're good so uh yeah um i'm honestly sergeant kong i'm kind of taking offers because the prices i looked up on ebay were so crazy that i kind of don't want to make an attempt to gouge somebody that bad. I, I saw them for 250 to 300 Um So if you want to shoot me an email, let me know. Yeah, and I'll throw in the... It's got the MXG gear clip, but it is the Para 3 specific one. I, I like it, uh, but I have the PM2 in the exact same configuration, so I want to get my Spyderco crew wear fix. I've got this. And for size comparisons, uh, this is the same size, and it's easier to keep around. You know what I mean? Because this is 91 bucks, so I, I don't need it. And I gotta feed the beast. Um, oh, you the Carbon Manix crew where I had one of those for a bit, and I had the opportunity to buy it, and I didn't, and I do really regret not buying it. You sold your crew wear pair of three for 130? Was it when they still made them? Because that, that is like way less than what they're going for. 
Yeah, that's enough ice. Um, wonder if you had the chance to handle the Leatherin free P2 or P4. I, I've not, uh, but yeah, I, I'm in a little group with some other reviewers and yeah, mixed reviews is exactly what I would, what I would say. Mm. That is really good scotch. That 17 year old one is excellent. Is that this bottle is? No, that's the 12. I probably already chucked the 17. That is good stuff. Are you going to pick up the Lion Steel Rock? That's what I'm kind of waiting to see at Blade Show. I don't think it's something I really want to spend the money on. Um, without messing with one first, you know what I mean? No, it's not like he's in a beer. You only sell for what you paid. Well, I I charge less less than market, but I'm I'm more of a capitalist than you, so I... I don't mind making a couple bucks on stuff every now and then because that's the only way this channel keeps going. Um, and, uh, I'm drinking, well, I normally drink beer. This will be a rare thing that I drink scotch because honestly, uh, scotch gives me a superpower and it's not a, not a good one. So uh, I don't like drinking a lot of scotch. I don't get mean, but I just get uh, I get pointed. I think that is the best word to describe it. Mm -hmm. Well, you gave somebody a very big bargain, Steve, so good for you. I'm not going to let it go for 130 though, I can tell you that. I don't care if I get less than 200 for it, but I'm not going to not going to let it go for 130. Uh a little booze take the edge off the day. Yeah, it has been a it has been a not a bad day. It's been a good day. It's just been busy. You are weird, Steve. There is no denying that. I love you, but you are an odd duck. Are you going to uh, you going to Blade Show, Steve? I think we'd have a very crazy time. I'm driving to Blade Show. I just decided today. I looked at planes. Oh, you are cool. Well, let's hook up. Let's meet up. Um, if you want to do really weird, if you want to get a whole lot of hits, I have a I have a two person hotel room with two beds. We could set up some. We could set up some live cams. Oh, you live an hour away. I was say we could set up some live cams and just have like a like a uh, a video of us living together, like uh, like Big Brother, with you and me, beating around a hotel room, yelling at each other. <laughs> that would be very funny. So you you guys all live an hour away, and no one offered to let me stay in there at their house. What the hell, guys? What the hell, guys? No one let me, you're just like three of you just said you live in Atlanta. No one offered to let me stay at your house. That is annoying. No, I'm going to drive down though. It's 12 and a half hours, but I like being alone in a car. I'm weird that way. And um, I have a lot of points with Avis. So um, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to rent a ridiculous, a ridiculous car. I didn't pay for my hotel. It's a free one. I can cancel it anytime I want. Um, I'm just going to rent a ridiculous, like a Cadillac or something and just drive down there because I can rent the car for free instead of flying down, spending 300 bucks flying down. Speaking of cars, what's up with that CRX? It, honestly, it's still sitting in the garage. I haven't taken it in. I'm so afraid that somebody's going to tell me it's terminal that I just kind of let it sit there because I'm afraid to let somebody touch my baby, but I think it's terminal. Uh, do you play golf? No, I don't. I, uh, used to, uh, but uh, my father was a single handicap, and he used to crush me at golf all the time and made me hate golf. So I, I loathe golf. I want nothing to do with it. See that sweet CRK you have now? I don't have, I mean, Chris Reeve. I don't have a Chris Reeve. Um, her bunkies and bunkies at Blade Show. I think it would be fun. We could do that. We got, we'd have to record it, though. Um, nothing is terminally terminal with CRX. Yeah, it is. It's a shell. I didn't do a whole new shell, I think. I think the rust is bad enough that just welding the shock tower wouldn't fix it. I think it, I think the whole thing needs to get, uh, I think the shell is gone. Let's bring out some more knives. This is running, this is not going fast, but you know what? I'm fine with it. I think everybody's having fun. We still got 85 people on here. It was over a hundred a minute ago, so let's keep going. I got this back. 
I let my buddy borrow it. I've actually let a couple people borrow this. This uh, this is the uh, Mass Drop uh, Mordax, Ferrum Forge Mordax Protech thing. That's a lot of words. I freaking love this thing. It is awesome. Um, what else would you guys like to see all the time? Oh, here's something new I got to review. This is something that was just I saw on Instagram, and I kind of liked the company, so I hit them up. I got the, uh, uh, this is the what, ABKT American Buffalo Knife and Tool. I can't remember which model this is called. Uh, Warhog. I just thought it looked cool. Asked if I could get one, and they said, yeah, it's pretty neat. I think the most amazing thing about it is this tiny little hole. It's a very tight little hole, but it works well. That's what she said. Um, oh, when are the Kaparas coming back in stock and you have to blow to get one? I don't know. I got mine, and I there was no fellatio required. Bailout or bug out? Uh, bug out. I, I'm actually trading my bailout just for something else. So I, I like the bailout. It's fine, but... um. I just, I don't, I don't need it. I, I like the bailout better. I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm not a black series guy. I've never had any of the, uh, any of the, um, black series bench mates that I really fell in love with. I'm just not a, not that kind of dude. I actually traded it for, you guys have seen this before, but I've officially, I officially traded it for this. That's why I traded my uh, bailout for was the uh, Kaiser Beg Lighter Titanium. Because it's just so damn pretty, I can't let it go. I can't quit it. Hey, Stasa, what's up? Um, It's just so pretty. Hmm. Am I a Leatherman man or a Swiss tool man? Leatherman. Uh, it, uh, how much for the Warthog? I think they go for 44 bucks. They're pretty cheap. Do you even operate, bro? <laughs> no, not anymore. My days of running and gunning are long gone, and I'm very happy with that. Would you sell your Wii Rectifier? Apparently so, because I did. Um, uh, do you own any Fox knives? I have. I don't at the moment, no. Don't ask me to recall which ones they are, because I am not 100% certain. I still the Honda that tie hinderer. Thought it was a loner from USA Mayblade. Eh, it may not be a loner anymore. It is It is a situation that is evolving as we go on. I'm not sure if, if it's a loner or not. So I might buy it. I might There might be some kind of trade thing going. I don't know. He's not in a hurry to get it back, and I'm not in a hurry to give it back. So I sold the rectifier a long time ago because I, um, I just didn't have anything else to do with it. I have to, I have to keep changing stuff to keep the channel going. So I don't... Um, I couldn't think of any more videos to do with it at the time, so I let it go. And a lot of times when you see these battles to the death, they are kind of to the death, because a lot of times the knife that loses uh, doesn't stick around very long. I like the Rectifier a lot, but uh, and also I, it might be discontinued. I'm not sure they make the Rectifier anymore. i got to keep up with stuff that's going on. i got to keep current, so sometimes I sell stuff just to get something else. <laughs> We're getting your. I'm not going to pay for a hotel room, Steve, if you live an hour away. I don't think that's how it works. Now, if all three of us did, you, me, and Nick, that would be very funny. Any CRKT? Yeah, I've got a large Pilar. It's in a case over near me. Um, and I have the regular Pilar. Do you have anything else? I don't think I do. Um. Man, if I got loners, quote-unquote loners, yeah. See you later, Eric. Thanks for coming out. Mm -hmm. The Hawk Orbit looks interesting. Yeah, it does look kind of interesting. That came up in a group that I'm in a while ago. D's knives with fart noises. Okay. That's what I read the little cloud things as. Favorite knife right now. Um, it's, it's probably my uh, Southern Grind Spider Monkey, which is, it's probably my favorite at the moment, but um, it changes. The Kapara is also way, way up there. It depends on the day. 
Um, but yeah, I really love the spider monkey. Just, it's great. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't think anything about it is perfect, but there's nothing bad about it. And I just, I just really love carrying it. And I like S35V a whole lot. D2 or OS8? D2. Yeah, this hinder is pretty great. I can't let myself fall in love with it yet, though, because I'm not sure that it's mine. I'm not sure that it's mine. Oh, we're all getting a room. Yeah, if Nick's in, yeah. I'll use, I'll throw, Nick's, Nick's a smaller guy than me, so when you attack me, inevitably, I will throw Nick in front of me to escape. And I'll jump out the window. I'll throw Nick in a smoke bomb. <laughs> and I will run away. I don't know how big you are, Steve. You, you, might, you might be a tiny little guy, but uh, we'll see. Um... More than the 0.562. The 0.562 just at the moment. I, like I said, it's a honeymoon thing. It's, there's, it's still new. Uh, the 05 and, and my Kapara was gone for a while. The 0.562 is still fantastic. Um, it's 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 definitely my favorite ZT ever made. Well, Super Steel Steve is a. You are not six eight three forty. I don't believe that for a second. Um, Super Steel Steve is is a sharpening magician, so he doesn't mind us eight. Because he just looks at a knife and it gets sharp. He can sharpen it with his eyes. It's like Superman laser vision, but it's just for sharpening knives. It's really impressive. So I've heard. I'm uh, I'm 5'11", about, was 185. Then I went to Germany for a week, so now I'm 190. Hopefully it works. Just increase the base price of the Spectre from 500 to 700. Woo, man. I have held one, and they are super freaking nice. I thought they were a bargain at 500, but 700. Wow, that's a lot. I don't know, man. That would be really, really close. Uh, what's the warning on the right? This is the uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool uh, Warhog. I think they're like 40 five bucks something like that it's america or ABK, abk abkt.com uh pretty cool i saw it in pictures on their instagram and i thought it looked cool and i asked if i could get one and they sent me one so yep i'm on the scotch tonight are you still doing if what's what's if i'm not good with acronyms it's probably why i'm not in the air force anymore I'm still doing if that's really gonna bother me so VV is all the berries right now. Yep, yep, yep. What is the pummel for on the bailout? Uh, vanquishing your enemies, I would assume. I don't know. I still have it, but it's going out on Monday. I traded it, so uh, I still got it here, though. You guys want to see it? It's just not my thing. I just it's a bit tactical. I have tactical knives I like. I mean, Jesus, one of my favorite knives that I've ever owned is the American Lawman, and it's pretty tactical. Um, but I, this is just, eh. I'm not a big Tonto fan, although I traded this Tonto knife for this Tonto knife. So, whatever. Uh, I guess I do like some Tontos. This one's just so pretty. And then, of course, you know, this, this is a, the Spanto. It's kind of a Tonto. Um, but yeah, that pummel just, I don't, I don't like it. It, it bothered me more and more after the review. The more and more I used it, I just was like, yeah. It's 3V, which is cool, uh, but I do like the 3V. That's neat. I, I thought about keeping it on just for that, but nah. It's a gentleman to drink. Whiskey and slicey dicey on it. Maybe we should do whiskey nights once a month. How about that? Once a month, it's not brews and blades. It's booze and blades. Once a month. I think maybe I'll do that. smoker not a drinker i used to i used to be well i used to always be both i guess but i haven't smoked weed and you know i just accidentally quit about um oh eight seven eight years ago something like that yeah i think we're gonna do booze and blades once once a week or once a month maybe last last sunday of the month i've been drinking booze so someone remind me but uh yeah i think last sunday of the month we'll do booze and blades instead of bruise and blades this is 17 year old Belvaney, it's good scotch. And my, my wife bought it for me. You can't... Oh, it is still underage. I get I get the joke now. I said I don't smoke. I don't smoke weed, but I am going to use my little vape thing now. Uh, 
I just put American law in it. I, I don't want to, I don't want to get a, I don't want to get murdered for copyright infringement. I don't think I'll put American Lawman on that. Yeah, I don't know how much this costs. She got me this little... It had three of these little bottles in it when I started. Um, I know somebody said that a full bottle of this is 70 bucks, And then it had this seven... There's 12-year-old double wood, which I already consumed. And somewhere... And there it is. And the 17 year old one that I am drinking now. So it's delicious though. Somebody said the Caribbean cask is the best. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for a, a special occasion. What flavor of vape? It's a tsunami um, tobacco, which is the plainest thing you can possibly get. It tastes like nothing, which is what I like. Knob Creek is good. That is one of the few things that I think that, uh, Steve and I agree 100% on is that Knob Creek is pretty freaking awesome. I do like me some Knob Creek. But uh, I'm weird. I like I like so. Oh, intermittent fasting. I don't think that was me you talked to about that. I don't I've never heard of that, so I don't think so. Do not vape on the crapper. That's like the only reason I go to the bathroom when I'm out. People think I have a cocaine habit or something. I just sneak in the bathroom to use my vape. So I don't have to go outside. Let's uh, switch some knives up. What else do we got here? You guys have seen this a lot, even though it's one of my probably it's it's probably the coolest knife that I sort of own. I I, st I need to clarify the situation on this. I'm going to talk to my blade show. I think this is mine. I'm pretty sure this is mine. And if it is, I will never sell it. It is freaking awesome. The Hinderer Half Track Full Tie. The USA made blade version. I'm not sure though. Um, we'll bring out. Oh, this is always popular. You guys always ask to see this. The uh, TRM Neutron. I did just I got it back, and uh, I it's that that was, so the weird thing is I traded this for the Skaha, for my carbon Skaha. I'm just going to get this out of the way because it's going to be gone soon. So I don't want you guys to get attached to it because it's uh, it's going in a box on the morrow and it will be gone. Um, so I traded this and a little bit of cash for the Skaha. And then with the with the idea that I was able to buy this back and um, that's what happened. He, he got a Neutron, he got another Neutron, and so I bought it back. So this is mine. It was someone else's for a bit, but it's mine again. And I just actually tore it apart last night. It had a, a bit of centering issues. And um, I think the last time I tore it apart, I flipped the washer around the wrong way. And I flipped it back, and it's fine. Do I have any quiet carry knives? No, but I really want one. I really do. Rent, rent a Lamborghini. Yeah, I, you know, I did that once. Well, I didn't. I was... I used to go to this uh, to Las Vegas for this show called Inner Bike. I hate Las Vegas, by the way. I'm sorry if any of, you, any of you live there, but I hate it with the intensity of a thousand suns. And going there for business is just the worst. But um, one year I went with an extremely rich friend, and he paid for everything. And when we went to go to the rental, we I, he said he got us a rental car, and I. So we got off the plane and I started walking towards the rental car things. And he said, no, it's not at the rental car agency. It's downtown. And I was like, you dumbass. Why'd you rent a car downtown? And we went and one of the casinos had a Lamborghini thing. And he rented a uh, Gallardo, a bright lime green Gallardo. And then uh, I was like, why did you rent this? And he was like, I don't know. I thought you'd think it was cool. And I was like, all right. And then... Uh, we got to it, and he threw me the keys, and he said, I'm not used to driving on this side of the road. I'm not driving this thing. So he, uh, I got to drive around in a Lamborghini for a week. And it was a horrible car to have in Las Vegas. It was very stupid. It was not fun at all. Couldn't go fast. It was just a really annoying car that scraped on everything. But it wasn't mine, so I didn't care. Uh-huh. What is the quiet carry that you have, Stasa, if you're still on here? Because that one looks... I can't remember the name of it. The one that you have is the one I want. Oh, what else do we have that I'm going to 
bust out. And um, got the uh, my Mercator, my uh, Mercator Otter that I got over in Deutschland. These things are so cool. They're just kind of little pieces of crap, but they're actually pretty nice. I thought I overpaid for this, but then when I got back here, I realized that, oh no, they just charge a lot for the brass ones. I got a copper one for my son. Mine has the uh, the non-stainless blade, and his is just the 1095. His has the stainless blade, and I've already got some schmutz on it because I used it while I was in Germany for stuff and didn't bother to clean it off because this isn't the kind of knife you clean off. Um, what up, Thailand? Do I have a malware? I don't. I I keep meaning to, and then I just don't, and I feel bad about it because I love Zell, and I really should get one, but I just I keep hovering over the buy button, and then I don't. And I feel bad about it. I should, though. I, I think I'd probably like it. The Roxy and I didn't bond as much as I hoped, but, uh, you know, it's just personal taste. A lot of people really love the Roxy, so it just didn't fit my hand right in a few different places. Oh, you got to drive a Mercy on a racetrack. That's awesome. Thoughts on the smock? Looks cool. I haven't, I haven't held one yet. I don't. I've heard kind of mixed reviews from people that I like, their, that I respect their opinion of. So, um, or opinions by. I don't want to word that. Uh, but I'll get one of eventually. But it's not a, not a priority. Horrible front for my smoke. This is one that I don't carry that much, but I can't bring myself to sell. Giant amount of knives. A fan? I don't... I haven't really handled that many of them. I want a Biblio, but again, it's one of those knives that I keep almost buying and then I don't. I buy something else instead, so... The button compression, I think, is a very good idea. There's some other stuff about it I don't like as much, but um, the button compression looks cool, except for the way that it makes you put that huge cutout out of the blade. Yeah, the enormous troil. Exactly, Danny. You took the words out of my mouth. I know there's a delay here, but... uh. Yeah, the enormous troil is kind of that doesn't blow that doesn't exactly blow my skirt up. Want to borrow a biblio? Yeah, maybe. I I I think that's one. I I'm sure if I got one, I'd want to I'd want to buy it. But um, yeah, maybe we'll see. I'll talk to you. Shoot me an email. Hey, Randy. Not a huge fan of smoke. I just can't get into the steak knife shape. I like the steak knife shape folders. There's nothing to do with that. I don't know. It's just I, I have other stuff and I just don't I don't carry it that much, but it's so hard to get that I just I don't know if I wanna if I wanna get rid of it. Like it's sometimes like whenever I have a bill looming, this is always the one that comes up in my mind that I might sell and then I then I don't and I don't know. And I love and I love this spec, exactly. This is uh I'm in my second one already, uh, Danny. So, um, uh, this, I love the spec of this one. Yeah, this is, I, I, they change the spec whenever they do, they kind of just make them when they feel like it. And, uh, I know I never get the spec back again. And I, I just do just like it so much. It's the M390 and the titanium. And, you know, I'm going to carry this tomorrow. I'm going to make myself carry it tomorrow. So, um, yeah, someone said they did get a, a typhoon, yeah, and he, like you said, they sold out in seconds. And oh, I, you're talking about the typhoon. Never mind. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't get the typhoon, but somebody up here earlier said it was. Uh, do I own a Z Hunter equivalent? I have an actual Z Hunter, but I have no idea where it is. I just looked for it yesterday, and I don't know where it is. But I do own a, a proper Z Hunter. I own the the one that Nick uses now. I don't have the the really bad one. I've got the the very bad one. Because Nick used to use the $5 version. Now he uses the $8 version, and that's the one that I have. I have the $8 one. I screwed up. I, I thought I was buying the crappy one. The Malice. Yeah, I just had it out. Where did I put it? It's around here. All right, we're going to put some stuff away. We'll put the... You guys can't get these yet, so I don't want to have it out here. This is a prototype, by the way. This one I am going to swap out for a, a production one. Because they did make a few changes, so I already talked to Mass Drop or Drop. They're not Mass Drop anymore. Drop, and um, I'm gonna get the 
I'm going to get a production one when those are out. So this is going to be going back to them and I'm going to get a, uh, a full on production one. So you'll see another video about that when I get the production one. Uh, you guys get mad whenever I put that away. I'm going to put the spider monkey away. I don't think you guys like the spider monkey as much as I do. And uh, smoke out. Oh, and this too, Steve Kluver, if you're on here, if you're not, you're going to, you're going to uh, be on it. Uh, I'm sure you'll see it later. Uh, I got an awesome trade with him. I traded the uh, Best Tech Bison for it. So I know that he knows I was getting a much better deal in that trade, but it was his idea. He offered it. I know he did it just to help me out because he knows I really desperately wanted the Marksman uh, Grey Ghost. And um, thank you very much for doing that. That was a very nice thing he did for me. It was his idea. I was in Germany and he said, I know you're overseas, but do you want to trade your bison for a for a marks for a marksman gray ghost and i replied immediately and i said let me think uh yeah definitely because these are hard to come by they make them in very small batches um reversible clip on the mordax no it's just uh it's right hand only and i don't think they changed that for the production one The malice, yeah, I'm still digging it. It's great. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be on the channel later this week. I'm do, doing a comparison between this and the O five six two tie. Can you wear the malice in gym shorts? Only if you tie the string really, really tight. <laughs> no, it's not so great for that. But luckily, I got this towards the tail end of when it was still cold, and I always had a coat on and stuff like that. How about striders? I'd never buy one. I'm very eager to try one but i also said i'd never buy a medford and now i'm very if i don't go crazy at blade show actually that's the one there's two things i want at blade show i'm mostly probably just going to buy boring production stuff uh, but on the million to one chance there's not boring production stuff available which is pretty actually honestly pretty likely probably most of the boring production stuff is just going to be showing it to you and it's not going to be available um the two knives i want to buy if i only bought two is I want a Koenig Arius and a um, Medford Slim Midi. And I said I'd never buy a Medford, so, because uh, I just didn't like them. And nothing against the company, I just thought, didn't think i like them. And the Striders, maybe. I don't think so, though. Striders, I think, are, are a bigger leap for me. And I've never met, is it Nick Strider? I've never met him. Um, but the bad stuff I've heard about him... Uh, turns me off a lot more than the bad opinions I had about Greg Medford. Now I know Greg Medford, and I have, I'm fine with him. Like Greg Medford and I are are, are pretty cool. Um, he probably wouldn't remember my name, but like we had a bit of a Facebook argument, and then we talked, and I talked to him on the phone, and um, we talked for like an hour, and um, yeah, and Medford's making some really useful stuff now, and I, I respect Greg. I don't agree with. 99% of what he said or what he says a lot of the times uh, but um, from a political standpoint and I think as a donor that's a bad idea to do that but he he's a reasonable dude and um, he's kind of like once once you start talking to him uh, once he realizes you're not an idiot and you came to those opinions with uh, valid research and stuff, even if he disagrees with you, he's fine with it. And that's kind of how I am too. If I get in a political argument, I may not agree with you, but as long as you're not just spewing, you know, talking points, then I'm going to let it go. Oh, uh, and you're an idiot, then I get upset, but you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Got to stand for something. I have things I stand for. He has things he stands for. They're not all the same things, but, um, but some of them are, and we can find common ground. And he's just a, he's honestly just a nice guy. I know it doesn't seem like that, but he's actually just a nice guy. He really is. Yeah, a bit abrasive. I'm from New York. I'm from upstate New York, which is as close to a mass hole as you're going to get. And I think we speak the same language, and we're fine. I just... He, he went a bit over the top, I thought, on a Facebook post, and I foolishly replied to it and said, um, said that I thought I, as a business owner that was a bad idea. And he immediately friended me, which I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then he sent me a Facebook message. I accepted it. He sent me a Facebook message with his phone number. 
And so I called him and I thought he was going to yell at me. And he was not at all yelly. He was very nice and just was very good. Yeah, exactly. Birdshot's interview with him is fantastic. If you, that's, that's the Greg that I've gotten to know. If you want to go watch that, that's the Greg I've gotten to know. Like, he's a nice guy. He occasionally still says things that you're like, whoa. But he's a super nice dude. And, and very smart. Very smart guy. Coney's going to make a full-size goblin. Do you know when? I don't know. I, I would imagine maybe we'll probably see it at Blade Show, but I don't know. Are there any changes from the Skaha 2 to the Carbon Skaha? The Carbon Skaha is, is the Skaha 2. It, it, it's just an option. That was an option that became available on the, uh, on the Skaha 2. It is a Skaha 2. Uh, I thought the S35 turned around on the freeway went. Huh? I thought. Oh, you bought the S35. Oh. Um, Koenig Arius or Holt? I I I I've never held. I mean, I held the Holt, but I, I just want a Koenig so bad. I don't know why. Just from looking at pictures of it, I don't know. What's your take on Cold Steel's marketing? I wish they didn't do it but it bothers me less and less every day. Um, Len Thompson is Len Thompson. That's that's who he's going to be. Any slip joints on your wish list? Uh, actually, Savivi just showed today, Patty. I don't know if you're on... Um, I know you're on Instagram. Uh, they just showed Savivi's going to make a really nice-looking slip joint. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's a lockback. It is a convention-like lockback. Um, I like the... Uh, um, I like the new Wii's slip joints. They're very nice, but um, I'm so happy with my, uh, you missed it, my TRM Atlas now that I'm just so happy with it. I'm just not super shopping for slip joints, but um, am I DVRing Game of Thrones? No, I am using my friend's HBO Go password so I can start it at any time. I just have to make sure not to look at Twitter between the time this live cast ends and I start watching Game of Thrones, that's all I got to do. The Manly Wasp was very nice. Uh, I, I, the one that I got in for a loaner, I had the opportunity to buy if I wanted to, but it was the Digicam, so I didn't get it because I do not like Digicam. Anything on the new Wasp? It's supposed to be out next week. The, you're talking about the Savivi tiny one? I talked about it just a minute ago. Um... Their last video is, is ridiculous. I haven't seen it, but you know, it's just they, they do what they do, and Cold Steel's gonna be Cold Steel. And I like their product so much. Like, I just showed on the uh, my, my most carried this month, one of them was, was the, is the 8010. I mean, I love Cold Steel's products. I love the American Law oh, Man. I always love that knife. I love the Code 4. I think the Code 4 is still one of the best, like, hard duty EDC knives you can possibly get. I, they make such good products that I just, I can't. And I'm really eager to meet Len, Len Thompson at a, at Blade Show. I hope he does that sword challenge thing again, because uh, I did take a sword, I did take a college course in sword fighting. And I will, I will, I will challenge him at it. But only if it's one-handed. That dual wielding thing, I don't do, I don't play that. But if he does one-hand sword fight challenges, I'm all over it. And I will let someone video it, and I will put it on, put it online. He's probably gonna whip my ass, but uh, but I, I would I like to I'd like to try, I'd like to take it a, I'd like to take a shot if he'll just do one. I'm gonna bring out my my Grail that is not mine, my Grail loner. It's almost worse when someone loans you your Grail. And it, uh, Gareth Bull Shamwari. This is the mini, so it's not my complete Grail. I want the medium. Oh. Don't give him a heart attack. <laughs> I won't. I, I'm not in that awesome shape myself anymore. My legs are. I could kick a hole in a wall, but uh, I'm not, not, not huge amounts of upper body strength anymore. And never was. I just got in that, um, that habit from racing bicycles that you just have huge tree trunk legs and no upper body strength, like intentionally. Because you don't, don't want the extra weight. I think I just kind of got in that habit. So I'm... Scrawny up top with big... Although my not even that big anymore. DH gate. I don't do anything with them. 
That's a nice Sabenza clone. Yeah, whatever. It's a Gareth Bullshit Mori. You know what it is. Nice attempt at a joke, though. Keep writing. Um. Hey, Thomas. Glad you caught me. Yeah, I'm not going to be on too much longer. I, I am wondering what's going to happen with Game of Thrones. I think this is going to be an hour of the Lannisters posturing. Sorry if you're not a Game of Thrones fan and don't know what that means, but I think that's all it's going to be. How much? I think these... You can never get them, so I'm not sure. This is a loner. I want to say in this form, this is kind of the most... The second to most basic one. I want to say these were like 650 something like that 650 700 but on the secondary market because he makes so few of them they just go for stupid money on secondary market this is probably a grand which is just silly but that's why it's my grail why it's not something i would buy did i see anything mind-blowing at the bike show yeah a few cool things um you know recumbent trike stuff weird stuff like that um that's mostly what i do uh a really cool velo. I don't know what velomobiles are. They're uh, completely fully enclosed recumbent trikes, and um, a couple of really cool velomobiles. Um, some cool, just like artsy exhibits. They do artsy kind of stuff there, and they had like a. They took a recumbent trike and, and turned it into like a, like an eight. Had like eight feet, and it walked around. It was for this company's twenty fifth anniversary. That was really cool. Um, yeah, it's always a fun show. It's weird. It's called Spezial Radmasa, which means special bike show. So they don't show anything normal. You have to be weird or you can't get in the show. So uh, what's the appeal of recumbent? It's more comfortable. And the really... So there's a, two extremes of the recumbent market. Most of them are just designed to be really comfortable for baby boomers, stuff like that. And then on the other side, there are really light carbon fiber ones that do... Uh, what they call ultra racing so race across america which is exactly what it sounds they race across the whole damn country um they do 24 hour races they do uh you know 12 hour races stuff like that the really light carbon fiber laid back ones are faster on those because they're more aerodynamic on the flats so they're much 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 faster on the flats and uh you don't have to get off as often because you don't get you don't get them don't get sore. Yes, I am going to do a Spider Monkey versus Skaha one. I feel bad doing it because the Skaha is not available very much, but people have asked for it. So I'm going to do it with an apology up front saying, I apologize for comparing a knife that you can get to one that you cannot get. But, well, you can, but you have to wait two years. What do you carry when you're riding? Something lightweight. I know last year it was either my, uh, I haven't ridden that much this season. Uh, it's mostly been the bug out. Uh, so last year it was a Native 5 Lightweight or my Bug Out. This year it's probably going to be a Pair of 3 Lightweight or my Bug Out, one or the other. Ooh, 94 Volpe. That's nice. That's a nice bike. I actually know exactly what that is. I was a I was a complete Euro snob when I used to uh, race road bikes. Yeah, but riding I always carry something lightweight. Which is dumb because some of these freaking recumbent full suspension recumbent trikes i'm riding are 50 pounds so it you know an extra ounce of weight on my knife isn't gonna matter but it's just in my head i'm cycling i should have something light um yeah 94 full place i my my coolest road bike i had i would say i had a 98 uh were chody prx Tell me why you hate the Cannondale Jekyll. Because it was just a terrible, terrible bike. It was... I hated it. I raced... My last... My last pro contract was with Bubble Cannondale. I never actually raced under their banner because I was hurt. And I retired. Um, but they sent me a couple bikes. The Jekyll was just... The suspension was terrible on it. It just didn't work. I didn't like it. I found a... Skeletonized K bar I keep in the pack under the seat fixed blade. Yeah, I've thought about I, you know that's one thing I've thought about for fixed blades. I or I've thought about just buying a few Morris to throw in my bike packs, like the larger ones. Ninety three Ibis. Ooh, Ibises are awesome. Ibis had the coolest thing, guys. I'm gonna tell you. We're gonna no, I've not gotten the Caribbean cask. I'm gonna cut myself off uh, at the. I'm going to finish this one, and then I'm going to cut myself off for the night. I'm going to save the Caribbean cask for something else. But 
Ibis, and I'm sure you know this uh, nature bat last. So they had a thing that would, a part of the frame that would go up and hold the hold a cable, like the cable stops. And it looked like a hand, like this. They made it look like a hand and it was kind of cool. But they called it the hand job, which I thought was the coolest thing. And you could buy them as bottle openers. I just like the Ibis named a product the hand job. I just thought that was freaking hilarious. Um, wanting to get into mountain biking, should I use my Jekyll with replacement? Should you buy something for less than one K? I mean, if you have a Jekyll, use it. I mean, it's okay. I was a professional racer, so you have to understand that I'm, I'm a, I was very spoiled. Ride the Jekyll. If it works fine, ride the Jekyll. Um, Hogue Ritter and Iforce exclusive. Yeah, it is. It's uh, that's just through Knifeworks, the only place you can get it. Because I and I guess I guess the that was before my time, but I guess the uh, Benchmade uh, Ritters were Knifeworks exclusives. Am I correct in that? I, I heard someone say they they were Knifeworks exclusives also, which I never knew that. Stout or stout? I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. Rocky Mountain Slayer said, yeah, Rocky Mountain made some cool stuff. I almost signed with them. Uh, but then out of nowhere, Trek Volkswagen offered me a thing. So I did that. Buy a Mini Horizon D at Blade Show. I don't know. I might get a Briot. Probably not, though. I really want to get... If I buy anything... Because I think all the stuff that I would get for you guys to see probably isn't going to be available. It's probably just going to be, I'm going to see it and it's not going to be available. Was your eyewear lightweight for writing also? It actually is. All right. Somebody's getting blocked. Uh, hide user from this channel. That is my favorite button in the history of mankind. God, I love that. Someone is very mad at me because I hit his comments from my videos and he pops up on other people's uh, live streams and talks smack about me. Um, says, uh, says I'm a phony and I fake all my reviews. If, if anybody can tell me how to fake a knife review, I'd love to know because, God, it would save me a whole lot of trouble. A whole lot of time, anyway. Uh, aside from old Hondas, what cars are you into? Uh, Ferraris? Um... Uh, newer stuff. I really want a Subaru WRX. I think I'm gonna get one, but um, an older one, not a new one. Uh, I like Japanese sports cars. I used to have a Toyota Supra twin turbo, a '94, so I kind of had the pinnacle of the Japanese sports car. So I, other than a GTR, so I I can't really do much better than a GTR, but um can't do that so um on track for a full review what are you what are you asking about mm. seriously can i treat the pivot on my super freak with edci without taking the knife apart or do i need to nor i mean it's not gonna no you don't need to um it's gonna um I don't think so. Yeah, you might get patina in there, but you're not going to see it. It's not going to affect the operation of the knife. Because if it's got oil on it, it won't attach as well. But, eh, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, why would you get rid of the Supra? Because I was stupid, and I was getting married, and I sold it and bought... Um, I sold it. I had it for two and a half years. I sold it for exactly the same amount I bought it for. I bought another brand new car in cash and made a down payment on a house. So, um, but it was dumb because I, I bought it for 34 grand and I sold it, drove it for two and a half years and 40,000 miles, sold it for 34 grand. And, um, now they're worth about 150. So that sucks. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to cut this off. Not because I'm not, in, I'm really enjoying talking to you guys, but, uh, you know, if this video is getting long enough, no one's going to go back and watch this. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd be like, an hour and 35 minutes. I don't want to deal with this. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. I've had a good time. 
I'm almost done with my last scotch of the evening. So uh, thank you guys so much. This has been fun. And we are going to do, I think we're going to do Booze and Blades month, last, maybe last last Sunday of the month. We'll do Booze and Blades instead of Brews and Blades. So uh, yeah, I'm cutting you off. Bar's closed. You ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Hope you guys have had a good time. I definitely have. This has been a this has been really a really good time. I've really enjoyed this. So